you, church. Let's all stand together this morning. I'm going to plug in here. Hey. Church, you can go ahead and take a seat. So yesterday, I was on the phone with a good friend of mine that I haven't seen in a few years, and he's had um, a really, really difficult last couple of years. And um, 
Last night was the first time he was going to go back to church in quite a while. He was going to a new church. He was dipping his toes back in. He's been hurt. He's been wounded. He's blown it big time. And in the conversation, he was saying to me, he said, you know, John, as I think about going back to church, I just instinctively start thinking of all the spiritual things that I've done. And I start making this list of spiritual accolades that so when I meet a new person, I can hide behind those things. I can tell them all the things that I've done. And then he said, because I can't imagine people really realizing how broken I am. And so I just, you know, we all can relate to that, can't we? How often do we come into church on Sunday mornings and we're asked, hey, how are you? How was your week? And we say, good, when we're anything but good. When we're far from good, when we've had a terrible week, a hard week, we've, we've blown it and we've been broken, we've been hurt, we've been betrayed, and we hide behind, I'm good. Well, I want us to consider this, this morning. Jesus sees us. Jesus knows us. The real us, the, the us that is deeply wounded, deeply broken, has blown it 10,000 times over. And he says to us, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all who have fallen and are broken, and I will care for you. Come to me, all who are ashamed and in hiding, and I will cover you with my grace and my love. Come to me, all who are abandoned and lonely, and I will make you family. Come, come to me right now. Come to me and find rest for your weary souls, and find in me all you've been looking for. So Waterbrook Church, would we come to Jesus right now and worship the King who's worthy of all of our worship and praise? Amen? All right, so welcome to worship. So we have a few things going on here at Waterbrook Church that uh, we'd like to draw your attention to. Uh, first and foremost, today is a really, really, really special day. An exciting day, a day that uh, we've been praying for, anticipating, a day that we've been ramping up to for quite a while. Our dear sister, Carice, is being launched back, commissioned back onto the mission field to Italy, and we are so thrilled as a church family to be able to come alongside her and say, go. We're with you, we're for you. And so today we're celebrating Carice and all that God has done, is doing, and will do by his grace through her today. So uh, I invite you today to, to wrap your arms around Carice, to say we love you and we're for you. Uh, so in celebration of that, after the second service today, all of you who are here at the nine o'clock service, you're welcome to come back. We're having a luncheon. We're gonna have a nice potluck. Uh, lots of food, time to celebrate together and send Carice off well. So uh, that's first and foremost on our list today. We honor you, Carice. We're so thrilled for you to be part of our family. Uh, also, uh, we are ramping up our small group ministry, as we've been saying the last couple of weeks. And so we're still looking for hosts right now at this point. Uh, we'll be doing some training coming up for hosts and leaders coming up here. And also we're uh, looking for interest in small groups. So there's some signups out in the lobby there if you're interested in hosting or interested in small groups, put your name on that list. Also on the hub, waterbrook.church slash hub, you can sign up on there as well. A couple of youth group announcements. Next Sunday, it's coming up fast, uh, we are having our all-church paintball outing. And so the youth group is hosting that event, which means that everyone is welcome to come if you want to join us. Doesn't matter if you're in youth group, you don't have kids in youth group. If you want to come play paintball, we want you to come play paintball. So uh, would you sign up for that online? That is next Sunday after church. We'll provide lunch. Uh, and we'll need some carpooling. So we have a lot of details to figure out over the next seven days. So if you could sign up sooner rather than later, that would be fabulous. So the price covers everything that you need for that event. Uh, also, uh, youth group Camp Chaminade, or we are going to Camp Chaminade October 8th through the 10th, and the sign up for that and information for that is available online at the Hub. We ask that you would fill that out and sign up for that as well. Uh, next, by way of announcements for the women at Waterbrook Church, uh, Bethlehem South Campus is hosting Nancy Guthrie, who is a fabulous Bible teacher, on the dates of September 24th and 25th, and all the women at Waterbrook Church are welcome to join that. And so I believe you can sign up online for that. And if, also, if you have any more questions about that, Heather's got some information about that as well. She's surprised by that. <laughs> um, so in, in uh, next week, Pastor Kevin, he's going to be starting a new series uh, through the Gospel of Luke. And so the theme is Captivated by Jesus. Um, 
the, the glorious disruption, how Jesus comes into the world and he turns everything upside down. Everything we thought to be true is radically changed when Jesus comes and reveals what God is really like. And so in light of that, we're doing another art in scripture. And so uh, read through the Gospel of Luke, start reading through it, praying through it. And if you're an artist, whether that's painting, drawing, taking pictures, writing poems, writing songs, however God has gifted you for art, we would love for you to come up with some type of art uh, that displays the, the theme of the Gospel of Luke, who Jesus is and what he's like as seen in the Gospel of Luke. And so we're going to display that October 31st. So all artists, that'd be fabulous if you could uh, jump in on that. We'd love to share uh, in your creativity that God has given you. Last by way of announcements, we have, uh, we're going to be doing a, a child dedication coming up here shortly. Roland and Rachel are going to be dedicating Judah uh, to the Lord, and we as a church are going to come alongside them and, and uh, commit to walking with them as they're raising uh, their young man in the Lord. And so if, uh, if anyone here is interested in dedicating their child, uh, we would love to do that with you as well. So just let uh, Kevin, Gabe, myself, one of the elders know, and we would absolutely love to walk with your family through that as well. Uh, so since this week we're celebrating Carice and commissioning Carice, uh, it's only appropriate that this week we pray for Italy. And so Carice is going to come up here and share a little bit with how we can be praying for Italy. Okay, so as you've probably heard so many times from me, uh, Italy is primarily Catholic, um, and so that's obviously um, the first bullet point there, and it's less than 1%, I think it's about 0.4. Um, so there's a lot of um, religiosity, a religion in Italy and very little uh, relationship with the Lord. So, um, and then, and then, obviously, the second point is near to my heart because I believe that what we need is people to go and be willing to walk alongside Italians um, long term uh, to live out the gospel and show them how that works day by day. So, um, in light of going back at this point, the, a couple other points I wanted to to make were COVID. So, as much as there's a lot of stuff with um, us and people having depression and anxiety post-COVID or kind of post sort of pre-second, third round. I don't know what it is right now, but like in the world that we live in now, you have that in Italy as well. And and as, as locked down as we were, it was nothing compared to locked down that they were. So full families living in two-bedroom apartments, a thousand square feet, okay? So, so I'm anticipating a lot of that kind of stuff. So just pray just that God um, would heal a lot of people as they come out of that and start attending church. And some of them are and some of them aren't still. Um, and then just in general, even within that 0.4%, um, within the churches, there's a lot of infighting. And um, so just for us to get on the same page and for the gospel, just fight the same war instead of fighting each other um, is a huge just point to focus on, especially as we come out of it and yeah. Okay, would you pray with me for Italy? Father, we know that uh, you have set your love upon the people in Italy. Lord, you, you hear the cries of the brokenhearted. You draw near to the crushed in spirit. So those in Italy who have been locked down severely over the last 18 months... Oh, Lord, would you comfort them by your grace? You are the good shepherd who comes to shepherd your sheep, to care for your sheep, to heal the brokenhearted, to bind uh, the wounds of those who are wounded. Lord, we pray um, for many missionaries to go to Italy, to, to give their lives for the sake of the gospel there. We pray for the church there, the evangelical church. Oh, Lord, would you unify them in the gospel of Jesus Christ? Uh, we know the enemy loves to cause us to divide, to fight, to get us off mission. So, Lord, would you um, defend your churches? Keep them loving one another, pursuing peace, that the world might know that you have sent them. So, Lord, seek and save the lost in Italy. Would there be a great harvest? We long for the day when we will worship the Lamb who was slain with our brothers and sisters from Italy. Be glorified, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to stand as we continue to worship together. Amen. Let's all read uh, from Revelation 5, 1 to 14 responsibly together. Then I saw in the right hand of him who is seated on the throne a scroll 
written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who is seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain by and by your blood, you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that was in them saying, to, to him who, who sits, sits on the throne, throne and, and to, to the Lamb, be blessing, blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the, and the four, four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down, fell down in worship. <laughs> Splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries. Let 
name above. You're the name above all names. Oh, you are worthy of all praise. And so my heart will sing, my heart will sing. How great is our God. Then sings my soul. Gado, Eloa, Shiruki, Gado, Eloa, Kole Hani, Re, Gado, Eloa, Stas Grande, Maribioso, Juan Grande, Ezio. Canten hoy cuán grande es Dios y todos lo verán. Cuán grande es Dios. Y un grande Dios canta que el Dios Si me da que grande Dios, el nuestro Dios. With all your heart, sing. How great is our God. Oh, sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. Our God. Just uh, choose one of those languages, Hebrew, Italian, Spanish, English. This is a preview of heaven. Every language, every people singing the praises of the king. He is worthy. Just choose any language you want. I'm going to do Spanish, all right? You can do English if you want. Here we go. Juan Grande es Dios, canten hoy cuán grande es Dios, y todos lo verán. Cuán grande es Dios. Let's sing one more time. Dios grande Dios, canta que
se dignó se engañó santo se signó a tu trono un canto nuevo inaciamo a te santo santo Santo, 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 es Dios omnipotente, que será y siempre será. Todo el mundo canta, lo diré de re. Todo tu ser por mí, es Dios te adoro. Flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power. Yes! To you, the only wise King. You. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was in days and days to come. And I will adore you. Yes, I will adore you, Jesus. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. His name is Jesus. Jesus, your name is power, the breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Oh, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You're the Alpha and Omega of all creation I sing. Praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Santo, 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 e Dio omnipotente, che era e sempre sarà. Tutto il mondo canta, lo di e dredere. Tu sei per me e io ti adoro. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything. And I will adore you. Yeah, I will adore you, Jesus. You are worthy. You are holy, righteous, and good. Yeah, all the glory, all the glory belongs to you.
joy is found in communion with you, beholding your beauty and knowing your truth and living a life that pleases your heart. Responding with praises to all that you are. Sing, oh, how lovely is the King in all his glory, is the Christ who is holy, who was and who is and how amazing is his love so unfailing is his grace that draws us near what joy is found at the foot of your throne Bowing in reverence, giving thanks to the one. Joining the angels. And joining the angels in the heavenly throng, along with the saints in unending song. Singing, oh, how lovely is the King in all his glory, is the Christ who is holy, who was and who is, and how amazing is his love, so right now where you are, just feel free to sit or stand, bow down, just seek the Lord, seek his face, I've come, I've come to worship, I've come to fall down, you are worthy. Seek only your face. There's nothing better. Laying down my crown, I surrender all. I've come to worship you alone, you alone. I've come to fall down before your throne. To seek only your face, Jesus, your face. Laying down my crown, I've come. I've come to worship, I've come to fall down, to seek only your face, laying down my crown, I've come, I've come to worship with all my heart, I've come to fall down. Seek only your face, oh, oh, laying down my crown and singing, oh, singing, oh, how lovely is the King in all his glory, is the Christ who is holy, who was and who Oh, 
God, when we get a glimpse of you, we're never the same. When we see you for who you really are, holy, holy, and holy. Oh God, it, it's impossible for us to escape from you. Lord, you see us. You see us as we really are. With all of our sin, with all of our failures, with all of our flaws, we are exposed before you. And we just ask that you would have mercy on us, Lord. Have grace towards us. You are the only one who is worthy of all the praise and adoration. You are worthy to be extolled. You are worthy to be high and lifted up. You are worthy of the praises of every peoples all over the earth. All the peoples, let all the peoples praise you. You're worthy, God. You are the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And you are alive forevermore. You have the keys of death and Hades. You have defeated the grave. You have conquered death itself. You have the name that is above every name. And one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you, Jesus, are Lord mm -hmm. in heaven and on earth and under the earth mm -hmm. to the glory of God the Father. And so, Lord, we want to just bow our hearts before you. We want to revere you, God. We want to hallow your name. Your name is holy. We don't want to pretend, oh, Lord. We don't want to pretend that we have it all together because we don't. Lord, we just want to come raw, come raw before you. And we want to take this time, Lord, to confess our sins before you, to confess any way, Lord, in which we have rebelled against you, any ways, Lord, in which we have been prideful, selfish, and self-centered, any ways, Lord, in which we have preferred other things instead of you, Jesus, any ways in which we have exchanged you, Lord, for lesser things. Lord, whether it's lust, whether it's envy, jealousy, gluttony, whether it's anger, abusing others with our words, manipulation, being self-serving, expecting others to revolve around us rather than seeking to serve others with a glad and gracious heart. Lord, we just confess. So, Lord, let's, let's just do business with you right now, Lord. So let's just take a couple moments and just confess your sins to the Lord and get right with him. And then in a moment, our sister Carice will come up and pray for us. Let's do that.
Grazie che ci hai salvati, che ci hai creati e grazie che tu ci hai inclusi nel tuo piano di salvare questo mondo. Grazie che non meritiamo niente, ma tu eh, ci rendi partecipanti eh, nel tuo grande mandato e, e grazie per questa Chiesa, grazie eh, per il loro so supporto e, e grazie che tu sei veramente santo, santo, santo e non meritiamo eh, una vita eterna lassù con te. Nel nome di Gesù, Amen. Amen. You can all take a seat. At this time, we're going to move into our time of uh, giving. And just a reminder that um, this is an act of worship for us. We give in response to all that God has given to us in Jesus Christ. And so there's instructions um, um, on the screen as to how you can do that as well as online. If you're joining us online for how you can do that. And... Um, continue to worship together. Enthroned in the Father's love And destined to die And poured out for all mankind And God's only Son A perfect and spotless one and He never sinned but suffered as if he did. Here's what he said. All authority, every victory is yours. You're sending us out. You're sending us out. And lying in this broken land. And sing that again. Power in hand. The power in hand. Speaking the Father's plan. You're sending us out. You're sending us out. And lying in this broken land. Here I am, Lord, send me. All authority. And all authority. Yes, 
Yes, you did. Forever you've conquered. Jesus, awesome and powerful forever. You're awesome and great is your name. You overcame. Yes, you did. And so we will too. We have overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome. People from every tribe, we have overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome our brothers and sisters in Italy yeah we have overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony everyone overcome our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan here we go we have overcome by the blood and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome. The Savior, you're worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all our praise. You overcame, yeah, you overcame, you conquered. Jesus, you're awesome and powerful forever. Awesome and great is your name. You overcame, you overcame, yeah. You overcame, you overcame. You overcame, you overcame. You overcame. Victory. Victory, brother. Brother Bruce, he's taking it in right there. <laughs> Amen. You could all take a seat. Good morning. I invite you to turn to the book of Philippians, and we're in chapter 4 today. So um, while I'll give you a chance to turn to that, I encourage you to do that while I'm reading, to follow along and just soak in God's word here. So this is in chapter 4. We're going to start with verse 10. So it's the very last section of the book of Philippians where Paul is writing to the believers in Philippi on the kind of the north shore of the Black Sea. All right, starting in chapter 10. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble, and you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen.
Well, that's a fabulous text of scripture to read, isn't it? And there's a lot there. Let me just uh, point out this book to you as a church family. If you uh, don't have this missions book, you want to know what missions is being guided by here at Waterbrook. This is kind of our guiding text. And so we have probably have some copies around you can get. If you don't have one, can't get one, talk to Mike, talk to anybody on our missions team. We would love to um, get that for you and just encourage you. I'm looking around at some of you ladies. Welcome. So good to see you. Cheryl, welcome home to the couple getting married next week. Um, at the back, Kevin. Um, drawing a blank on your name real quick. It'll come to me. Bonnie. Sorry, Bonnie. Um, we pray for God's grace on you guys in the next week. Um, just as you're here, I mean, I, I trust that you're exhausted already um, in worship in a good way, but refreshed in the spirit. And um, I just did a walkabout, as uh, Crocodile Dundee would say, for old folks who know who Crocodile Dundee is, but um, I just traveled up to Canada. Uh, let me uh, again stop. What, um, what a blessed and gifted congregation we are to have such good preachers uh, to come in and preach every week. Andy, thank you um, for a fabulous uh, preaching, John. Um, leadership, it's just a joy. It's, I was sitting with my folks in the edge of an evacuation zone last Sunday morning, praising God, amening the TV, <laughs> thanking God for the sound group that was getting it on YouTube and, and sitting with my mom and dad, worshiping. So let me also welcome the Pagano parents. Um, I, I, I can only feel a little bit, I'm sure, what you feel increase going back. Um, pleasure to have you here. Uh, I have a daughter on the mission field and uh, been through grief. So all of that goes into sending off a daughter and going. And So I just want to, on behalf of our church family, say a couple of things. Thank you for your daughter. Um, thank you for your faithful ministry. That is, um, obviously, the Lord has been pleased to uh, bear fruit in Carissa's life. And uh, I pray with you that this would be one of the sweetest seasons of her life as she goes back. So, uh, Carice, we're really glad. So I'm, I'm going to put my cards on the table right off the bat. Um, I am going to speak to you today with the ambition of trying to get you to think afresh about your relationship, not just to global missions, but to global missionaries. Life is hard. Life is hard. It's hard anyway. Um, I just did this walkabout. Um, I stood on the edge of a lake um, 21 hours from here with my extended family who I haven't seen in two years and uh, put to rest my sister-in-law who died of cancer this year. And, uh, and my father-in-law, who is 80, led the whole thing. So I was standing beside him. And he's glorying in Jesus, just glorying in Christ. And I, my brother-in-law's beside me who's grieving his wife. He's just told me that life is colorless. And my nephews and nieces and my grandbabies are around a couple of trees in the middle of the woods by some big pine trees overlooking a lake that nobody knows exists. And I'm thinking, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we can sing. We sang. Thank you that we can pray. Life is hard. But thank you that we can stand together. Thank you that I had, I had to get four COVID tests in eight days. My, not, my sinus was as clean as you could get. <laughs> and uh, in order to stand with my family, I would have taken 20 COVID tests in order to stand with my family and rejoice in Jesus. And then I went to the other end of the province and was with my family. Every corner of the street has police cars and fire trucks. And last, yesterday, my parents' neighborhood had door-to-door -door firemen saying, make sure you're packed. We're probably gonna expand the zone. And I met my, my siblings and their families, some of their family, 
And on the day I was driving out of my hometown to go back to Toronto where I was catching my flight back to Minnesota, I get a call. We had just been talking about Cassie's landlord, how much she loves her landlord. And her landlord at one o'clock, I guess it was on Monday, got hit and killed by a car mowing the front lawn. And I'm praying for my family to know Jesus praying for my family to see Jesus. And it felt like um, the sweetest, hardest, most wonderful, most difficult trip. And then I came back and I talked to you guys. There's things I can't even say today about you guys and your hurt and your pain. And we're, we're, we're here, many of us have family here. Many of us are here worshiping. And some of us are decided to just uproot ourselves and go to the other side of the world where you don't have a network, where you're not able to get home quickly, where you bear the cross-cultural burden of wanting to love a people that you're growing to be part of and not wanting to lose the people you're far from. Right, Chris? It's just... If you get, there's no words, right? There's no words to actually say what it's like. And so I just want to come to my family and say, we've got to be family. We have to be family. There is an eternal family. We have to be in this together. We have to be it in this together when it starts. We have to be in it together when it struggles. We have to be in it together when it's called to a close. And one day, as we've already sung, we'll be in it together with every tribe, tongue, and nation around the throne of Jesus. Right? Won't that be a glorious day? So God help us. God help us. And all I'm asking you today is as I walk through this text and give you a few pointers on why it's a joy and why it's necessary to have deep gospel partnerships, and I use the word partnership in, because Paul uses the word koinonia for missionary partnerships, which means it's not just sign a paper, send a person, it's our lives are joined. We share life in Christ together. Our mission is together. And... Um, I, I'm also convinced as time goes on that um, there are very few people, very few people who are used significantly of God who do it alone. Uh, I wanna, want you to picture walking into an English pub in Oxford. And uh, Gail, you've been there, I'm sure. And... Uh, you walk in and it's dark. It's like, that's the beauty of an English pub, it's dark. It's old wood. It smells like it's been around for 400 years in the rain. And as you're walking along, you have to stop because somebody with their dog is walking by. And as you're making your way, there's a narrow, um, narrow row like this. And uh, dark wood, places to sit. You can hear people laughing and chatting and once you get once you get to the other side of the bar or whatever they call it, the pub, you know, uh, you get to the end, there's a, kind of an L-shaped booth, some tables, and there's a picture of C.S. Lewis. And uh, C.S. Lewis and J.A.R. Tolkien and um, a few of the others who were called the Inklings used to meet there, and they would share, talk, um, challenge each other, think deeply, be creative. But there was something else going on with the Inklings when they were sitting there. That was when, in that series of time between there and Cambridge University where Tolkien began to gnaw away at, at Lewis's a- atheism. And then Lewis eventually became a Christian and then became powerfully used of God uh, globally and in England during the war and after the war. And uh, 
I want, I want you to hear Lewis describe what the dynamic of that friendship was like. Um, I'll give you a couple of things. He says, friendship is the greatest of worldly goods. Um, just as an aside, you know, I had friends I couldn't see because I had so many people to see on my walkabout. I had friends calling me at the airport that I haven't seen for years, hoping we could connect. On Friday this week, I did a Zoom call with about 15 pastors, most of them who are my friends. And the whole goal was to encourage them as they fight the good fight. Man, we just need friends. Lewis says, friends, Friendship is the greatest of the worldly goods. Certainly to me, listen to this, certainly to me it's the chief happiness of life. If I had to give a piece of advice to a young man, I'm gonna disagree with him slightly here. I'm gonna take the heart of what he's saying and then just launch it a little bit. He said, if I had to give a piece of advice to a young man about a place to live, I think I should say sacrifice almost everything to live where you can be near your friends. You understand what he's saying there? He's saying friendship is important. Now what we're actually saying to Carice is kind of double-sided. Uh, Carice, you gotta leave your friends. But we know you already have friends over there. The other thing, just if you don't know what Carice does in Italy, I would venture to say, and you can change and clarify this, what Carice does is she she establishes uh, Christ-centered friendships. She has friends that are grieving right now. She has friends that are ill. She's built the relationship of the gospel around brokenness, and then she has ministry partners who, like the Inklings, um, who need friends to help them impact Italy with their music. And with the gospel, she's racking her brains here. How do we get a building? Where do we go? How can we live? How can we set this up so you can make a difference for the kingdom? And you realize that's, 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 that's got your administrative gifts, that's got your heart, but it, it's, it's got a deep love for these human beings as they struggle to make a difference for Christ. And so as we come to the letter of Philippians, and I just want to encourage you, let me again just say it real simply, can I ask you, to do more than commit yourself to global missions? Can I ask you to get to know, to get involved, to get engaged with actual missionaries, human beings? Let me give you a, a quote from uh, Andy Johnson's book that I just shared with you. I think it's important. It says, too many churches view the breadth of their missions commitments rather than the depth as the measure of their love for the nations. I've seen many a church hall adorned with a map sprouting pins for every place where the church supports a missionary. That may be just fine, but not if the church assumes that having more pins equals making more impact for missions. In reality, it often means the opposite. Meager support to a bunch of missionaries barely known by the congregation. But if, what if we turn breadth and depth on their heads? And even as I hear that, do you hear Ephesians? Right? That you might know the height, width, breadth, depth of the love of God in Christ Jesus. What if the church gave the same amount, but instead of 50 pens on the map, there were only five or 10? Or lots of pins in a large church, but only three or four places around the world. How might that change things? So that's what I'm aiming to do, this is what we're aiming to do today. Waterbrook's aim is to be deeply and faithfully committed to Carice Pagano as she is on mission in Italy on our behalf to the glory of God. Got that? So that's what we're aiming to do. So when she is in Italy, we are in Italy. When she is sharing Christ, we are sharing Christ. When she's suffering for Christ, we better be suffering for Christ. When she's celebrating with Christ, we're celebrating with Christ. God's people say? Amen. Amen. So what makes a good gospel
God-pleasing a God-pleasing gospel partnership. Let me give you a couple things I want you to pray about today. And the first thing has to be, this one, what I want to say, the first thing has to be hunger. Um, this has to be from our hearts. Nothing is sustainable by coercion, right? External formulas are not any substitute for the inward transformation of the heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to be hungry for real relationships. Aren't you tired of surfacy relationships? Aren't you tired of having um, lip service to partnerships? And again, I, I'm not dismissing every kind of relationship and not saying that every single person can be deeply engaged, but Waterbrook as a church needs to make sure that we as a church family watch our sheep. Carice is part of the sheep of Waterbrook. And and I, I'm doing this for two reasons. If we do this well, there will be more people willing to go on missions. And if we do it badly, who in the world in their right mind would want to go? Right? And so we're praying that we would be this, that in the long run, if God is pleased to tarry, that more people would be willing to go, that more nations would be reached, and we would have more testimonies here I just wish I could tell you how many things go on in a week in this little church in the world. I, I was weeping as we sang and, and uh, Gabe talked about Afghanistan. We have people here in this church who've been actively involved in rescuing people out of Afghanistan. Can't say, but that's what goes on in a little church when people are looking for the opportunity to yield to Christ. So God's gonna put all kinds of opportunities and we need to say, God, make us hungrier for the real deal because we nibble at the table of the world, we, we are distracted, we are bombarded with um, amusements. Uh, and again, you know, I just, it's real palpable for me because I, when I stood with my in-laws and buried Kathy the other day, um, I just thought, man, we have paid a price being apart. We have paid a price being apart. And we need each other. And, and so we just gotta pray, God, help us never to forget Carice on a Tuesday. Wake us up in the night. Make me restless in the night. Who cares if I sleep? Let me pray in the night. Tune us in in the night. Pray that God would continually give us opportunity. So listen to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Paul says, I rejoiced greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. <laughs> I, I like that because it tells us, one, this is the church that sent Epaphroditus. This is the church that Paul will say, you were the only ones who cared about me. And they were going, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? How do we help? And they, they couldn't find it. And he said, and now you found a way. <laughs> and you sent goods. And I got everything I need, but I'm glad because because I'm glad for you because we so love each other. We've got such an intertwined history that it was hard for me to be here knowing that you were there worried about me not knowing how I was, how Epaphroditus was. Don't you want that kind of bond? I mean, I know you guys know what that bond is like. I mean, I have that every day with my kids. Right? Any of you parents know what this is like. You know what it's like. You know what it's like. God, give us that. Give us that and show us. How, how do you find opportunities? Because what Paul's saying here is the thing that was bothering them is not just that they needed to find a way to help Paul. They wanted Paul to know they hadn't forgotten him. You know, it, it's one thing for us to be sitting here thinking, boy, we want to help Carice. It's another thing for us to think, I don't want Carice to, to have a moment where she doesn't think we've got her back. 
We don't want that demonic lie to settle in to say somehow you've been forgotten. Isn't that how the enemy goes? He wants us to believe we are alone in the battle. That's here and that's there. And even more so there, I would say. And so that's got to be birthed. Holy Spirit, help us. We are aiming today at something that takes more than human energy. We need miraculous power. We need the Holy Spirit, the God who never goes weary or faint. That's what we need. Oh, God, help us. I want to share with you just a couple of, um, this is from a book by Kelly O'Donnell on just um, points on where you can actually show your concern. I think I've, I don't know if I put it up there. Do I give it to you there? In this book on caring for your missionaries, this is just, I, I'm really just trying to be practical here. Um, so if you're thinking, how do we help missionaries? There's, what he has in his book is there are four kind of phases. Number one, you can help ministries, uh, missionaries pre-field. I, I, I have a sense, although Chris has already been there, that's what we've been trying to do. So pre-field is everything, recruiting, selection, candidacy, deputation, training, that before a missionary goes there, the missionary should be equipped. Now, to be honest, when my daughter headed to Honduras, we were in England, and she left. <laughs> now, she had been training her. She had been to Africa, and she had been serving. And I mean, but she was gone. You know, when, when God puts a fire in somebody's heart, sometimes the, the, you just see the screen door swinging. <laughs> so the, 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 the pre-recruitment, but, you know, that's one of the things we ought to do. Before they get there, they better know that we're in. And so sometimes, just as you're thinking about how do I support missionaries, sometimes it's to say, hey, what, what can we do right now before they're gone? Ask them, talk to them, invest them. Then there's field, first term, additional terms, change in job, location, organization. That's some of the things Carice is going through right now. And as she's communicating, she's moving for probably from where she was. Are you ending up in Bologna? Or are you where? Right, sorry, say it again. Okay, I'm not even going to try it, but <laughs> Italy. <laughs> Somewhere in the boot. <laughs> but as she's making transitions there's so much that goes with that and you know you know that the transition itself is going to be difficult or it's going to be um it's not going to be just one step and it goes the way you want it to go and so some of it is this next thing we got to hang in there re-entry you know I'm, i think Chris will tell you re-entry for her this last time was enormously difficult because re-entry was the death of her sister and, um, you, I mean, you don't even know how to ask for help. And that doesn't go away. That's actually what she takes with her. That's, I was saying to my daughter in Honduras the other day that the Lord's choicest servants must suffer. And I don't say that lightly. But she's better equipped for missions grieving than not. And that not to make light at all of grief. Post field, um, end of service retirement. Some of you know the, there's a famous story of a missionary who came back to New York City at the same time one of the presidents of the United States had spent 40 years in Africa. I've got his name written down, but I'm not going to look it up. Um, and he came, came back and um, one of the presidents, I forget which one it was now, but anyway, they were coming back into New York Harbor, and he had been hunting in Africa, and when they landed at the port in New York City, there were marching bands and a big salute, and they were all there for the, obviously, the President of the United States who had been there for two weeks hunting. And they got off, and when the President went and the parades marched on, they got off. Not one person was there to greet them. I think that can only happen when when you haven't been involved all the way through. Um, I'll tell you this, I panic if I'm not at the airport when my kids arrive, mm -hmm. right? Because when they come through those doors, I want them to see the shiniest, baldest head they could possibly see, and then hear the little ones go, Fafa Lafa, because that's what they call me. Mm -hmm. Fafa Lafa, right? But it's one I, I know I want to 
experience their love, but the other side of it is, I don't want them to doubt for a moment that we have been waiting for the reunion. See what I'm saying here? So, so we have to pray by the grace of God that we can find ways. Um, Pioneers is going into unreached people groups. I just re- read an article of how they're trying um, to try to do this thing in COVID. How do you stay connected in COVID? Can't send teams over. So they've been doing these missions trips that are um, being done through WhatsApp and live stream and stuff. So they have a whole team set up here who go on the trip from America to an unreached people group. They get uh, prayer requests and reports in the morning. They send texts back and forth, communicate through WhatsApp. All along they get pictures and they're videoing going with their missionary all day long. You see, what, what, what they're doing is it's not just hearing, it's not getting a letter every once in a while. It's doing everything you can that your heart would beat with their heart, that your prayers would beat with their prayers, that you'd be engaged. So that's, that's all we're saying here is we gotta pray for a hunger. Here's the other thing. We need to pray for humility. And all, all I want to say in this text of Scripture is two things. Missionaries don't need us. If they've got Christ, they've got all they need, right? Isn't that what Paul says in this letter? Paul, Paul's writing them, and there's this mutual concern towards one another, but he says in verse 11, I know you're concerned, I'm glad you had an opportunity, not that I'm speaking out of need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, I know how to abound in ebony and every circumstance I've learned, the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need, I can what? Do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is that true? Greece, is it true? It's true. Look at the next verse. Look at the very next verse, the Apostle Paul. Yet it was kind of you to share my troubles. I want you to hold those two things together. No missionary will survive on the mission field unless they learn the secret. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then no missionary will make it through the mission field apart from the design and grace of God without understanding that Christ strengthens his missionaries through his church. We are Christ's hands, feet, prayers, encouragers, right? That's why Paul says, I had troubles and I'm thankful that you hung in there. And so uh, Paul says it, there were painful times in his life. Second Timothy chapter four sixteen, he says, "At my first t- defense, no one stood by me, but all deserted me." Is that the worst of scenarios to imagine? And you felt this. Haven't you felt this? Felt like like there was a moment when you thought I needed somebody there, and they did not show. And all I want to say is God give us the grace to reduce the number of times that happens in any believer's life, especially our missionaries. Our missionaries need us. They don't need us to quote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. They don't need us. Missionaries don't need Christians to give easy gospel answers. What they need is Christians to make sacrificial gospel choices in the name of Jesus. See the difference between those two things? They need more than a verse. They need us to fast and pray and to weep and to cry. And if you can get there, get there. Or if you aren't the one to go, send someone or do whatever you got to do. But there are sacrificial choices we make that make the gospel mission possible. Doesn't take away the battle, doesn't take away the hardship and the difficulty, but it certainly makes sure you're not fighting alone. I don't want to fight alone. I, 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 when I was on Friday with this dozen to 15 pastors, I just thought, why is everybody on this thing? And the thought in my head was, it's because there's nobody who wants to fight this battle alone. And too many have. So we need gospel humility, which says, A, they don't need me, and B, obviously, because I'm in their family, they need me, because they need Christ. 
and those are not contradictory, they're absolutely coherent thoughts. Third, we need perseverance. Um, when Chris goes in to Italy, um, she's a woman, she's an outsider, although she can speak Italian. Um, she's in a culture that won't readily accept her. And the, and the truth is, um, just be honest, it may or may not help that she's American depending on who she's talking to. Um, God can use Carice and convert a thousand souls on day one or week one. And praise God, let's pray for that. But the other reality is however God elects to do his work, let's be in it for the long haul. Because most global missions is a long walk in the same direction. Most global missions is building trust, building relationships. Those of you, you know this with your own family. If you have family that you desperately want to know Jesus Christ, God sometimes is pleased to radically convert them. And some, some of you have had your whole family converted. And there's others of you who have been pleading and praying for a, a generation. Are you going to stop? No. Because Christ is worthy. And so let me just remind you from this text several things. Ministry is a real battle for the missionary. Verse 14, it was kind of you to share my troubles. It's interesting in, in uh, Philippians, Paul actually is in prison, but he's writing them to encourage them because prison is exactly the right place to be. He's preaching the gospel and having an effect like he's never had before. Prison is a hard place, it's the right place. But he says he's got troubles. Um, it's a battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's warfare. The salvation of souls is not intellectualism. It's a battle for the soul. It's satanic. There's a battle in the heavenly realms. And we need to be pleading for one another and standing with one another. So it's a battle. Secondly, um, it, ministry is often lonely. Look at verse 15. You Philippians know in the beginning of the gospel when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. And, and there are various reasons why missionary work is lonely. It's lonely because nobody stands with you. It's lonely because you've left everyone you love. It's lonely because you've buried the people you love. A thousand reasons why we feel alone. And so we need to hang in there during those lonely times. Isn't it one of the great comforts to you? Last night I was praying with someone uh, whose family member died last night. And I prayed the 23rd Psalm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For what? Thou art with me. Friends, how do we know sometimes when God seems a million miles away that he's with us? It's because when we thought he wasn't with us, the phone rang. The mail came, a text came, and someone said, for some reason, God put you on my heart. Is everything okay? Right? Our comfort is that the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. And I want to say to Carice, on behalf of Waterbrook, God being our helper, we will not leave you or forsake you. So, you can hold us to that. God being our helper. Three, ministry is a long walk in the same direction. I already shared that with you, but look at verse 16. He says, even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. How often did they help? Again and again and again and again and again. As much as often as necessary. It's a long walk. <sighs> 
Boy, I wish I could tell you everything that's on my heart. I was in this little town where my parents live. I grew up in this little village. Our church is in the center of town. It's now evacuated. They can't have worship. The back doors of the church blew off in the explosion. Ceiling tires fell. Well, when I grew up in that church, we had missionaries, the Colmans, in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. We all knew them. They lived over there. We knew the parents. We knew the kids. And uh, when I was in ninth grade, I gave my life to Christ. And Dan Coleman had graduated from the Rift Valley Academy in um, Kenya, Rift Valley in Kenya. He was where he went to school. And he came back to the place that was home for his family, even though he had ra been raised the whole time in Africa. You know where home was? It was a little village that I grew up in, in that church. And he came back at 18 years of age, and I had given to my, my life to Christ at 13, or 13 to 14, and he discipled me. It was one of the most influential moments in my life. He had come back to the family that had supported his family, loving Christ, and took me through the Navigator's uh, memory system, and we went out and played uh, soccer, football, soccer, football, you know, um, and uh, went back and ate. His aunt was, I called her Aunt June. She just died this year. She made peanut butter cake. It was crazy sweet. We drank milk read the Bible, he asked me, did you memorize your scripture last week? And God's word was placed deep in my heart. That's how missionary relationships should be. Mutual beneficial. So this is the last thing I want you to see. We ought to pray that we might have the pleasure of doing this. The pleasure. In this verse, it says, Paul says, verse 17, this brings eternal reward to the Philippians. He says, not that I seek the gift, I seek the fruit that increases to whose credit? I want you to be involved in this so that when I stand before the Lord, I'll hear God look at you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And you go, who are we? And we'll throw down the rewards before and say, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive glory and honor and power and dominion. For you, for you were slain, and through your blood were saved people from every tribe and tongue and nation. And the elders will fall down, and the angels will fall down, and will fall down and rejoice forevermore. Don't you want that? That's why we do missions. There's eternal reward. Secondly, there's also present pleasure to God. Notice he says, I've received full payment and more, verse 18. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering. Hear this language. This is the, uh, the language of the, the fellowship offering in the Old Testament, in Leviticus 3, it, that they would offer, and it was a fragrant offering acceptable and pleasing to God. You helped me. It was pleasing to me, Paul said. But when you helped me, it was a sweet aroma in the nostrils of God. Every time we help one another, every time we serve in Jesus' name, every time we help Carice, our Father. Let me just ask you this, Mr. Pagato. If we help your daughter, will you be happy? All, I, all I'm going to say is, and you don't love her like our Heavenly Father does. So, just think about that. Every time we help Carice, our Father in heaven is like me. Every time you help my daughter. Thank you. You and I have been singing all morning how great the love of the Father is, how great the glory of the Father is, how worthy the Father is. He's worthy of us helping his daughter. This is his daughter. This is his daughter. Thirdly, our generosity will be an opportunity to experience the pleasure of God's faithfulness to us. Notice Paul says, and my God will supply every need of yours according to the riches and his glory in Christ Jesus. I could say this a hundred ways, I'll just tell you this, whatever we give, we'll get more from God. 
in grace and encouragement, then we'll never outgive God, and God will supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. That's great news. And then ultimately, the last sentence is the best sentence, I think. Gospel ministry leads to eternal glory and eternal gladness for us. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Is that good enough? Is that good enough? May God be glorified in Italy. May be God glorified in every language we sing here at Waterbrook. May be God glorified in Victoria. May God be glorified in Carver County. May God be glorified in Minneapolis, St. Paul, in the southwest suburbs. May God be glorified in Minnesota. May God be glorified in America. May God be glorified in North America. May God be glorified to the ends of the earth and to all time. And we will say amen, 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 right? What do you say? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Oh God, we love you. And we are only undeserving servants, but you have made us sons and daughters of the King. And so we plead with you, do not leave us out of this. Do not let us be out of this. Help us, oh God. Fill us, oh God. Encourage us, O oh God, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask our uh, elder and the director of our global missions team, uh, Mike Meyer, to come, and he's going to lead. I'm going to ask the elders and Barnabas team um, to bring Carice up, and we're going to pray. I'm going to ask you to join in praying over Carice this morning. Barnabas team and others who are supporting Carice. Um, anybody else who wants to come up? What we're going to do, we're going to lay hands on Carice and pray over her. So this is biblical. We see this all throughout scripture, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, where even back in Numbers 8, God tells Moses to have the Israelites lay their hands on the priests or the Levites to set them apart for the ministry that he's called them to. Um, we see this in the New Testament with uh, Timothy, we see this in Acts, where the seven in chapter six who are chosen, and afterwards they pray over them and lay their hands. Um, and then I think fitting, uh, we, we see this in uh, chapter 13 with Barnabas and Paul, where it's in Antioch, where they say in, in verse two, it says, While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid hands on them and sent them off. So we're going to do that now. We're going to send off Carice, pray for her, lay hands. So uh, if anybody wants to, Carice, do you want to come up here in front? And... In the congregation, you can just extend your hand and symbolically lay your hand on Carice as we send her off. So, Heavenly Father, we, we thank you and we praise you for our dear sister, Chris, Lord. Um, you have called her, you, you have put Italy on her heart, even at a young age, and, and she has been obedient to your calling. Lord, we pray for her now as uh, in the next couple days she prepares to leave. Lord, I pray for even the, the little things and, and, the, and the packing and the saying goodbyes and the preparations and, and uh, COVID tests and, and the airline flights and just be with her, Lord. And I, and I pray for reentry as, as Chris um, reenters into life in, in Italy and in reconnection with her partners in ministry, Lord. Um, make it sweet. Um, bless her. We pray for her ministries, Lord. I pray for the women that Chris has poured into and, and discipled, and, and for those in the future, Lord, that you have uh, appointed for Chris to, to minister to, Lord. I, I pray that they would know just the peace and the beauty of the gospel. Lord, we, we pray for the traffic in ministry, Lord. Protect the young girls and, and women in Italy, Lord. Have your hand upon that ministry. Mm-hmm. And for the music ministry, Lord, for uh, Leo and Antonella and, and, and 
the translating and, and, and the writing of, of good worship music in Italian, Lord. We pray that your name would be sung and praised all throughout Italy. And for all the other connections and, and ministry that Christ does, Lord, help her to strengthen the local church and, and just bless her, Lord. And Lord, uh, I pray for Waterbrook, Lord. I pray that we would model Third John, Lord, that we would send and support Carice in a manner worthy of God, Lord. Help us to uh, not forget Carice. Help us to continue to pray for her. Help us to send emails and text messages and video calls and help us to write letters. And Lord, I pray that even some of us would go and, and, and spend time with her in Italy, Lord, and encourage her. Lord, I thank you for the Barnabas team. Bless them as they continue to support and minister to Carice. And Lord, uh, we can't do any of this without you, Lord. So I pray that in your power and your strength, you would bless Carice in a mighty way. Amen. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 is for you he is for you he is for you oh. 
upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 God's people said? Yeah. Amen. You are dismissed.